Elaine? I think we've, we're at a, a very important stage, actually, of, and particularly here at four years from now, you know, we've got the chance here to talk and look ahead. And um, with all the changes that are happening around us, with the amazing opportunities being offered by augmented reality and mixed reality um, solutions that are starting to occur, we need to start to look more at how the body is the centre of all this and how this technology needs to work more deeply for us. And implants is one of the ways to look at that. All right, wonderful. Daisy, you'll tell us when you're ready for this to happen? No, this? Yeah? Okay. Nice. As she's putting on her gloves, and I assume that Edgar is getting every more and more nervous every second, to tell you guys that he put lidocaine cream on his hand so it wouldn't hurt him, but they've assured us that it's just a small prick, although he needed to prepare himself a little bit. So, what's going on? Your hands numb now, yes. Yeah. No? Not quite. Oh. I'm super excited about this, everyone. He's my friend, and I do want to see a little bit of blood. So this is going to be really cool. <laughs> okay, so you said you've seen this before, right, Gillian? So I have, in fact. Um, what is the future of this? What does it look like five, ten years from now? I think we're looking at a point where perhaps the 18th birthday present of four years from now is actually an implant. I think we're looking at the possibilities, and already, actually, in Swedish Railway, um, are issuing to businessmen implants, they have a choice to have that instead of their season cards. We're seeing implant parties happen across Europe. Um, young people are very interested in getting rid of all that stuff you have to carry around in, in your pockets, what you can lose. So your, your key fob, your, your credit card, your travel card, all this information that can be held within a chip. So, so right now, before anybody has seen what's about to happen, and the blood, and I'm just kidding. Before anybody knows what it can do, by a raise of hands, who would put one of these chips in their hands? Okay. Would you say that's like 15% of the people that are here? We'll see if that number of hands goes up or down after this experience. But we do have already 200 medical implants that many of you will know about. I mean, even for women, there is now more and more regularly used um, fertility implants are used and, um, instead of contraception, yeah, um, and anti-getting pregnant um, implants. And those are very simple implants, but there is a lot of very specialist ones, so like the deep brain simulation ones, which are used for motor neuron diseases, Parkinson, and muscular, muscular cirrhosis. So we are already using implants a lot in medical, and many of us have implants for our teeth. So. That's a good last point. So this is what I'm imagining. I'm imagining that right now, the chip that we're putting into Edgar is just a normal near frequency communication chip. It's able to hold very basic amounts of data, not super high levels of encryption and all this cool stuff. Um, and it's basically just the same as having a card, one of these key cards for your office or something like this. But I'm kind of seeing that a few years down the line, you could have so much stuff on this, right? Like, what if you had some sort of bio sensors in this? What if it could tell you your blood sugar as you're wearing it? Or what if it could tell you what your body is doing? How much melatonin is in your body right now? Is it a good moment to sleep or isn't it? Are you very stressed or are you not? Do you know all these amazing things that could be happening? She's rubbing her hands together, so it seems like this is going to happen. Are you... <laughs> Are we going to do this? Are you ready? I'm super excited. Edgar, are you ready? <laughs> Woo! All right. Let's be honest, this is me just talking a little bit because we're all excited to see this. We'll give it a couple moments of silence for the tension to build up and then I'll keep talking. I'm nervous. Do you have one? <laughs> Not yet, but I'm planning it. And I'm working with um, a friend who's an implant, chip implanter. I'm just talking to her now about what to do, what I'm going to choose to have, what data to hold on it. Yes. So. What would be the first thing that you would put on it? I'd like to get over um, this constant keying in codes, um, just quickly being able to open phones, laptops, etc. But I'd also like to get rid of quite a lot of things I carry in my bag. I'd very much like biosignal feedback in different ways. Yeah. Um, and I don't have a medical 
medical need, but many people do have that. So I think there's a very useful um, potential for people who, like you mentioned, uh, diabetes, um, even sun exposure. You've had too much sun, you know, vibrations on that. So, um, and maybe there's something more creative to do too. There are so people using chips to make music in the air. There are people using chips to feel earthquakes around the world, to feel the weather coming. There's, you know, very creative, wonderful, individual, idiosyncratic choices as well. I'm excited to see this. Let's take a pause really quick and see what's going on here. It's three, it's, oh, it's waiting. Okay. So I guess we're cleaning the surface. <laughs> the surface is his hands. <laughs> How excited are you on a level of zero to 10? 90%. 90%? That's it, that's all I needed. It was just a quick, it was just a quick check. Okay, so how far away do you think we are from everything that you're saying, all this cool stuff? As I mentioned, I do think for younger generations, this is um, a definitely a way forward. Um, there's been a lot of testing of implants, both for the medical side, but also for information-based and data implants. Right. Many different materials can be used, gold, silver, platinum, uranium, and in different parts of the body. This has been happening for quite a while now, and we have some quite strong pioneers who experimented with it from the 80s onwards. Um, okay. So, yeah, I think so, we're ready to move. So, Edgar is going to be putting some digital bling onto himself right now. Um, yeah. Oh, that's a great idea. Does anybody have any questions about what's happening right now on a very simple, very simple level while we're waiting for this to happen? Uh, my question is really what is the functionality of this ship and also for how long is he going to have it there? So for how long he's going to have it in there is however long he decides to have it. But what's good about it is that it's simple to take out. It's just one little prick and he can take it out. So it can be in there for, I think it's like five or something more years. It depends on the type of manufacturer, but they all have a coating that's biocompatible. Again, as I said, the functionality of this specific chip is not the most complex in the entire world. It's just a normal NFC chip from like a credit card site. So actually this is, I just keep walking over here to see what's happening. Okay, so I'm gonna be like David Attenborough as I kind of dictate or narrate what's going on. The area has been marked with what seems to be a marker. <laughs> super, you know, technical level. Let's talk about something while this is happening because I'm getting super excited about this. Oh, should we do another question? Sorry. Yeah, why not? Let's go for it and then we'll keep talking. Um. Ed Edgar, is your name? What data are you gonna put on this? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What's the data that this gentleman's gonna put on the chip? This gentleman, as he will explain to you later on, uh, will be putting the opening credentials for his house on it. Um, in a bit, he'll be able to put payment information on it, and he'll even be able to put some type of Bitcoin wallet and some other cool stuff like this. And if one day he gets a car that has one of these keyless entry fobs, maybe he can put that on there as well. Okay, this seems like it's going to happen right now. Moment of silence, everyone, for Edgar. Okay, so can you see it? Find that angle. So, it's magnified, guys. It's, it's not that big. Okay, so, the syringe is about the size of two times the needle that they use to, oh, oh, it's happening. Okay.
Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Keep it going for Edgar. You really uh, held up like a champ. <laughs> Okay, so a bit of technical specs, and then we'll, we'll pan back to Edgar to see how he's doing. 